Hey, everybody. What's going on? Rob Sestrino back. And oh, I'm so excited to have uh, some uh, bonus ah. podcasts coming your way uh, this week. And, you know, we had Gabe talk about the Mount Rushmore of the new era. And oh. what a great time to talk with somebody who is a lock for the Mount Rushmore of the new era. Here she is, Carolyn Weaker. Carolyn, how are you? Good. You think so? Because sometimes oh, I... I know so. What's that syndrome that is called where you... Imposter uh, syndrome? Yeah, I, I suffer from that 100%. And I have a hard time. Like, it wasn't until... I'm not kidding. Like, during the season, when the season was airing, I didn't read anything because I had gotten... the I had seen, like, some bad stuff before the season started, and it made me cry for a week. And I'm like, I promised myself I would never go online and search my name again. Anyway, but my dad would always send me, like, the good stuff, the positive stuff. Other than that, it's like I wouldn't have known, like, what people thought of me yeah. or... And I still now, like, like it's, it's just crazy. And so hearing that, it's like, who are you? I thought you were going to, like, be talking about Parvati or something. Well, Parvati's not even from the new era. Or, or not, or whatever. Like, not, you know what I'm saying? Like, somebody, mm -hmm. like, more, I wouldn't think me. Yeah. Carolyn, I also, I wrote a newsletter for our reality TV newsletter. And I, I said that you were on the Mount Rushmore of all-time confessional givers. And you know what's crazy about that? And it's kind of like, believe in yourself. Because yeah. even then, when you see on the season, the first confessional where I'm struggling, what I was, it's hard. And I didn't think that I would, I remember thinking, I'm probably not going to get many confessionals. And I said that to production out there. I said, hopefully I don't get purpled this season. I truly believe that. I truly believed out there. I was like, I don't think I'm going to be narrating the season because why I don't speak like a lot of other people. I get nervous to come on your podcast. And I've told you that because I don't talk or sound like people who are so eloquent and so well-spoken, you know? Mm -hmm. So thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm so happy that you're here. I'm so glad <laughs> that you made the time to do this. And we'll talk a little bit about Survivor and everything that you have going on. You're a podcaster now. I'm trying. And to be honest, I look at a lot of your stuff and you're doing such a good job. And I mean that, like, there is no one who do, like, I, I don't even want to, like, be like, hey, hopefully I get to the level of Rob because it won't happen. Like, and you, you put some hard work into it, but you do so well. And not just with Survivor, it's Every, like you're recapping everything and people are excited to do RHAP. It's the truth. When I, before I did Survivor, what did I listen to? RHAP. What did I, what was the thing that Stephen Fishback, he post or he did the, um, but it was outdated. He did the, um. People blog? No, this was old. And then like, if you read through the whole thing, I think the last word was like fake fan or something. Stephen Fishback did something, he, and the last your, word was was fake fan. Fake fan, and it was a test to see if you had had listened to all of it. Yes. Wow. It was, what was it? It was like how basically like a bunch of secrets that if you like play the game, like basically like a how to guide. Wow. And yes. Stephen wrote this. No one uses it anymore. Like I, I believe, and so I wrote to you before I did forty four, and I was like, "Is this still relevant to Survivor today?" And of course, you didn't see it because whatever you're you, and mm -hmm. I, and I listened to all of it. I did all that stuff to prepare. I would go on your site. I would watch stuff. I would read stuff like all the Bloomberg crap. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So you okay. just do I know. a lot. Yeah. All right. Well, tell me about your podcast that uh, that you and Carson are talking about the season. Well, recently, um, so I'm trying to. It's hard for me because I don't like to read a lot of the comments because I, I not that like I I don't want I I want to shelter myself from like if there is hate. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. need to like ruin my day, but at the same time, it helps for constructive criticism and feedback. So recently, somebody had said Carson said this last night. He's like. Yeah, someone was saying that we don't uh, talk about the episodes enough. So, because <laughs> we, we've been having guests on. So they're like, you need to, if you're going to have an episode recap, yeah. you have to talk about the episode more. 
job. Yeah, but you know what though? That to me, and I, I don't really do a lot of episode recap of Survivor. I watched the episode. What do I need a recap for? I just watched it. Yeah, but that's what you do though. And then this happened, and then this happened, and this happened. Uh, but I, I, I don't know. Maybe because I do so many podcasts, but I don't think I, I, I I've never done a Survivor podcast where it's like, okay, now I'm going to say every single thing that happened on the episode. But you do a good job at it and staying structured and you keep like key points. You do where it's like, okay, I can tune in and kind of get a play by play of what happened. So people, but I'm listening to the audience and they want a little bit more recap. So yeah. we're going to, we're, you know what I'm saying? I get a little excited with the guests sometimes. Yeah. You've had some great guests on the podcast too. And, uh, you know, would love to talk about, uh, that and your experience. What's been the biggest challenge podcasting about the season? <laughs> about this season in particular or i mean i guess this is the one season i mean podcast about survivor 40 what five a little bit and then 46 i think 46, i don't even remember but, uh, and then who they knows? Us, or were, maybe it was 45 and then yeah yeah so, so but this season this season first of all the technical stuff you have like a great setup it's beautiful it's like your you've setup got the is light. nice yes are you like on I the second floor it's just not, this is like, I change my setups. I want a permanent setup like you. I yeah. also, my microphones haven't been working and my, like, I've just been having a lot of technical difficulties, but I would say other than that, like the hardest part is like watching and it's so different once you've been on, do you not? I mean, I know it's been a little bit for you, but it's like, I see the beach and I'm thinking all of this stuff of, oh, yeah. of like my experience. I'm watching it through my, and it's hard to, to watch it like how I used to. Mm -hmm. That's what's hard. And then yeah. I want to be kind to people, but also I have opinions. And so that's a balance too. It's, it's like, I don't want to be a bully because I know how it feels to like, I don't want to like be mean to people, but it's like a balance of like having an opinion. Yeah. Well, could you speak to that a little bit? Because I think it's so interesting because that you, you know, you talked about how, you know, you're uh, sensitive to criticism. And so you don't want to read uh, criticism uh, that's out there about you, but also you want to be able to talk about the show and then also keep it real and be authentic about it. And not everything is going to be just 100% uh, fine and dandy with everybody. So I, how, how do you find that middle ground? I don't. And I'm a hypocrite. I'm serious, Rob. I yeah. really like I, I do because we had Angelina on and I was like, she's like, yes, but like we, you got to be kind. And I'm like, sometimes I don't want to. And we might make fun of you. And yeah. So but you know, hard... also, can I say, Carolyn, that, that that should also be OK. You know, that that somebody should be able to say that uh, you know, I didn't like that. That wasn't that wasn't good. And maybe you don't say it a hundred percent perfect. And then it should be a little bit like, okay, well, you know, I did go on national TV to go play a, a game, so it, it does come with the territory a little bit. It's true, and I I don't want to like say there's such a difference between like even making fun of a move versus like the personal attacks. Like I had people say that they were literally saying like I was on drugs. She's on crack. She's just about like my personality and like there's something wrong with her. I had so many like personal things where it was like, okay, that's me as a person, not yeah. like I made a stupid move. So there's a huge difference too. And I would never ever like attack somebody's like personality, but I have been even like when it comes to this season where I feel like protective over certain people like Andy, where I felt so bad for him that first episode. And so like as a form of, a former player i wanted to reach out and just be like don't read don't read what people say don't because that was a bad first episode it was all i would be that was really bad yeah so i i just feel like protective in that um aspect of things but also it's just like we put ourselves out there and i'm not saying that that should welcome hate but have fun with it make a joke of it you know yeah now, it's been a couple seasons since you've played. How often do you find yourself reaching out to the current players to like give them advice or to say like, "Hey, you know, uh, I'm, you know, I'm 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 rooting for you?" Not often, and it's not 
it's just I, I mean it's only recently that i finally like even turned my notifications back on for like messages i didn't um there's so many people that i still haven't responded to because i was really really like during the season and then even afterwards and then stuff just kept getting like crazier and busier and i couldn't respond and it wasn't i'm not okay with giving like responses like hey thanks or yep okay mm -hmm. And so I would give these deep, heartfelt responses to people, but that's not enough either. So once you do that, I couldn't keep it going. And I was spending so many hours responding to people that I just I just completely shut it down and I wouldn't respond to anyone. So I wouldn't this is look fans at my... reaching out to you. I don't like to separate it, Rob. I oh. don't. And so it makes me uncomfortable to I don't want to sift through my now, messages and the be play, the and, players are our are, are fans also. But even like like people will be like, oh, so and so reached out to you or oh, this person like, I, 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 you know what I mean? Like where it becomes like, mm -hmm. uh, I never wanted to sift. through. Yeah, I'm a fan. I never wanted to sift through the messages to like be like this one this person's more important than this one so I'll reach out to that one. I want to go through all of the messages and that like was too overwhelming. Yeah. So when they come in, I can't does that make sense? And so yeah. I I just don't how people get a hold of me now and this sounds like really weird but like people will usually like get a hold of Carson and they'll be like, "Hey, I really want to get a hold of Carolyn. Can you tell her that I'm trying to get home? Yeah. And then I'll reach out to them or or if it's somebody like Andy who is clearly was struggling and had that episode, I naturally am going to reach out to somebody like Andy because I feel for them. How about when you played? Did the previous players reach out to you? It wasn't until like, and this is where, again, I would say like midway through the season, I stopped checking. I stopped looking, but it was like one of those things where like, again, I have like the imposter syndrome, but also it was like, I really thought that I was going to go on TV and just be the freaky weirdo who people made fun of. And I was okay with that, but I don't know. It's like, it's like the more um, like the positive response I got then from people, it's like I didn't know who was like genuine or who just, you know what I'm saying? And I just don't, I already like have trust issues. And so I didn't know, you know what I'm saying? I don't know who is actually. I'm not being, sure like, what you're saying uh, that, uh, that you didn't know if people were like trying to pregame with you for a comeback or they were or just, cloud yeah, chasing or just be fake with me be yeah. fake with me or like do you just like you don't know me and so it's like what what's your motives here is that not am i still playing the game then i don't maybe i have trust issues but i just didn't know how sincere people were and so i just it, 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 you know what i'm saying so typically yeah. i'll need somebody like todd herzog to be like hey carolyn you can trust this person look out it's true and i trust todd herzog so it's like that i kind of need like a reference otherwise like you know what i'm saying was Does that, that something make sense? yes Does, was that something that you had to deal with from before you played survivor or was it going through survivor that made that a big issue to trust people oh that's just been an issue but like personally just being burnt by people you know mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's why, and I'll carry this into like, even that's something I'll continuous, continuously work on. And I'm really open about like, when I struggle, I don't stay stuck. I do self-help groups, I'll do therapy, all, but that is a continuous struggle of mine. And then obviously, like, I know the cast has been announced for the traders, like, put me on another show with trust. And <laughs> so yes, it's, 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 it, this is a game, but like the truck, like it's so emotional too. these games and you see it with teeny and I won't like, I know we'll talk about that, but it's like when you're in the game, yeah. it parallels your real life and whatever struggles you have in real life, yeah. they are going to come out a hundred times more out there. Yeah. So Carolyn, that I'm glad you brought that up because this was something I was thinking about as I was watching the episode. And, you know, we have that moment with Teeny where everything is going on with Genevieve and she felt like that Genevieve, hey, did you vote out Saul to humiliate me? And Genevieve's, no, no, why would I do that? I, I didn't do that. Uh, and Teeny is in this uh, really tight spot in the game. But Teeny tells us then in confessional, like, hey, 
this bad spot that I'm going through in the game reminds me of something that I'm dealing with uh, yes. so much in my real life. And, and I thought that that was so interesting because I, I think to myself of like, okay, now I didn't play Survivor in the new era, but the whole thing about the new era is that it's fast. Boom, 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 boom. You don't have time to think about things. And so I thought that that was just very interesting that Teeny was feeling that way. And with er everything that was going on in the game swirling around, got Teeny thinking about life outside of the game. Of course. And I related so much. Oh, my gosh. And I thought of, like, I was crying right along with Teeny because, like, it's like you're out there and you're stripped away from everything. And so you do start to, like, self-reflect. There's stuff that was creeping up from, like, that the stuff that I thought that I had dealt with, stuff that okay I'm still struggling with that it completely like triggers all of like whatever issues that you might be having in your regular life because why this is a game about emotion and relationships and people as much as they want to try to separate it like you even see Genevieve like kind of like this is hard it's hard it's a game about emotions so I just completely related to where teeny was at and just feeling like where do i fit in where and now here i am out here i i keep getting blindsided where do i fit in and then you go to tribal and it's all about like community and we're fitting into the community and it's like teeny's probably thinking like nowhere i don't know i'm trying to figure that out but you have those moments because there is there is yes it's go 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 but you have those moments of reflection and so like even when I got blindsided by um, Carson and from um, Jam Jam, I loved them. And so for me, it brought me back to every single time that people that in my life, that people that I loved and trusted betrayed me. It did. It brought back. So it's not even necessarily like I'm I'm crying about a game move or, oh, it put me in a bad position or like it hurt because I'm a human being. I can't separate like the it, it's too hard for me. I can get over it. But I, it takes me a little bit longer because I truly care about the people that I'm playing with. It's hard. Yeah. So Genevieve I, and Teeny had that conversation in the beginning of the episode. And that it was so interesting that they were coming at this from two very different perspectives of Teeny, yep. who didn't want to play a very emotional game, like has been like unable to uh, avoid playing a, an emotional game and making emotional connections. And Genevieve has almost come into the game and said, you know what, I'm I'm not going to have emotional connections to people. I'm going to be all business and I'm not going to let my emotions be part of the game. And so for uh, for either of them, like, is that possible to be able to be just all of one thing and not both? I like, I, and I just still don't understand. I think that that regardless, people make emotional like it, it, it's. There's going to be decisions that are made that are emotionally driven by some people, and I think it's more obvious than um, with certain people when they're more outward with their emotions. But it's like you can't deny that this is an emotional game and where you have to literally make bonds with people. But yes, I think that there are certain people that are just able to do it, and certain people who aren't. I am one of them. I can't. I can't. And I think that it's even getting to Genevieve. Like, yes, yeah, she's out there and she's, I'm going to do this and I'm going to. But you see it kind of get to her a little bit, right? Or was she faking those tears? I, I don't know. She's very expressive and uh, very fun to watch on the show. Do you think that now having gone through this whole experience, do you think that Genevieve is going to be different? Or do you think that we're going to see Genevieve, as she called herself, 007 last week or 00 several. I don't, can I, first of all, I think it's going to catch up to her. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that um, you can't, like, eventually it catches up to you. Do you, I mean, what do you think? I don't think that that can, people find out, people, I, I, she's already like, uh, like Teeny, she, she was so close with Teeny. It's like, and then the soul thing, like, I just, I don't get it. I, I don't, I don't understand. I think it's going to, I think it is going to catch up with her. I do. People you are know, already on to her. 
people are already onto her. And I didn't think it was going to be as big of a thing, but then it felt like it kind of blew up to be a bigger thing. And everybody was like, Who's, whose idea was this? And then it ends up oh, yeah. being Genevieve. So that's where Rachel is in the better position, in my opinion, because no one really is suspecting. No one knows. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's like, yes, everyone knows now Genevieve and Teeny, like, mm mm. Well, now, and Genevieve is kind of at the bottom, and then, you know, she is such an intimidating player, I think, in the minds of the others, and so I don't know how she's going to necessarily be able to come back from that. No, I know. I don't know. Like, I, I could, like, yeah, that's the thing, too. It's like, you, you want to, like, oh, that's what's so annoying about, I haven't heard the word big moves in a while. Are people even saying that anymore? See, I think that one of the things about the new era is that, that we started the new era where it's like, hey, got to make a big move, got to take oh. out whoever's the biggest threat. And then what happens is you make the big move, you take out the big threat. Guess what? Now you're the big threat. Now you're the now person. We, exactly. Yeah. And but it's so boring. But sometimes. for Genevieve, I, I thought that she had kind of like stumbled onto a good idea of like, hey, Saul's not the biggest threat. He's the medium threat. I'm gonna like yes. uh, I'm gonna take out a medium threat and then I won't be considered to be the big threat because I just took out a medium threat. It was just a medium. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. sorry, but dogs. Not it doesn't matter start. because it's like, well, whoever just did something did, did is that. aha, you just did something. You just did it. So you're done. It's true. Like you're done. So it, it, it just, in my opinion too, and I've said this, like, I, I know it's not smart, but it's a lot more fun to watch. I think that's like a lot of the reason why people were like, to watch with, the show or when you're on survivor uh, to be a little both. bit more inactive. No, be active. That's why I loved watching Rome. Was he smart? At t out there no but mm -hmm. was he fun to watch yes i'm talking as a viewer it's like and as a fan i don't want to like I i'm sorry i feel like that's why a lot of people like even with the well no there's a lot of reasons with like the gabler win but it's like so many people too in the new era where it's like i gotta be under the radar i gotta like people can't know that and it's so boring to watch so yeah. i appreciate like when stuff actually happens i like chaos i like like I like people, um, you know, turn. I, I do like eventually turning on their alliances. But with this season where I'm having a hard time connecting, mm -hmm. I'll be real because I'm yeah. an emotional person and I watch for different reasons. And it's the truth. I don't I, um, I like watching crazy and I like watching chaos. So when Rome left, um, I again, I know he was not like the people were saying <laughs> how ridiculous he was and just like. He wasn't great at a lot of things, but yeah. he was so fun. And he, he, how I looked at him as somebody who went out to play Survivor and to really play and not in the most smart way, but in a way where it's like, I'm going to check everything off this bucket list. I'm going to make sure I do this and look for an idol. And as like, as someone who's been out there and a fan, that's fun. I want to see someone who's doing something, not, I, I don't need necessarily like the smart moves. I don't. But what I'm missing is like the the connections with people. I think I don't know who it was who just said we're just like a random mix of people who it's all like chaotic as far as um, like who's close with who. It's like a bunch of people with like broken relationships, people who've turned on each other. You have um, like Andy, Rachel, Sam, like there's no loyalty there. Yeah. I need some loyalty other than suit and Gabe. It was like. You know what I mean? Sue, Gabe, Caroline, that was like kind of something. And yeah. now Caroline screwed over Sue. And so it's just like, I like to actually see re like people working together in emotions and alliances, not just a bunch of people screwing each other. So I have enjoyed the season and I've been having a lot of fun, but it seems like, uh, like what you're saying, and I, and I think I agree with this, is that as far as the, if you're going to retell the story of the season to somebody, what has the story of Survivor 47 been? It's kind other than like, well, there was this guy, Andy, and he kind of had an emotional moment and then he came back from it. But other than that, it's just been a little bit of like a mishmash. There's not really like yeah. in your season, there's a real story of like, okay, well, there's Carolyn and there's Jam Jam and there's Carson and they're sort of like uh, that nobody was thinking about them and they stuck together and they were able to sort of like weave through 
And, and there's a real story in that season to this point. We have not really gotten like, you know, a story of survivor 47. They're on. I don't I, like, I, cause I'm enjoying it, but I just want to see like, it's, it's, it is, I, I enjoy watching when like, even when the vote outs where it's like, Oh my gosh, this per this person betrayed that person. And I guess you could argue, okay, Caroline and Sue, Caroline did it last night to Sue. Mm -hmm. Um, I like seeing Sue's emotion and Sue being like, I can't stand Kyle and Kyle, that, that whole like yep, montage. That was a great <laughs> moment. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, that's real. That's how Sue is feeling. Um, but I, again, I liked, I, uh, I liked like the connection of like, okay, these two are going to stick together. Gabe and um, Gabe, Sue and Caroline. And now like that's even out the window. So it's like, and then with Teeny and with, <laughs> with Genevieve. Teeny, there with teeny and uh Jennifer, what's your dog doing like, Car carolyn i don't want him to he's probably gonna spit up his bone so i didn't want him to do that okay how's he just doing he's good he's way hyper everyone who meets him they literally say like i can tell that that's your dog like because i think people say that like you are like your pet yeah, yeah. and so he's just really like ah. he's great though i love him he's my best friend yeah I know when we had talked last, you said that uh, you know he has to have a certain diet or he's going oh, to. Oh, he died, Rob. Girl. Oh, that's like, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh no, my god. I, I've grieved it. He was ready to go, but this one's hairless too. He died. I had to oh, put him, I had to put him to sleep. So yeah, he, he was older than crap. So like, there don't feel like he was. I feel so he dumb. Was ready. He was ready. Yeah. And so I found this one, like, I felt like I'm not ready to get another dog. And okay. it's so hard. It's so hard, like, losing a pet because yeah. it's like you don't want to replace them and nothing will replace them. But I knew I needed another hairless. Um, I just did. And I'm like, I found Jerry. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm happy for you. Uh, you're probably like, what? Can't believe this This monster brought up Kramer. my it's deceased okay, dog. It's oh, it, you trust me, it's okay. And I like these dogs because for me, when I adopted the first one, I, and you might wonder what kind of people, yeah, make fun of like dogs or make fun of, even still, when I go to the dog park with the hairless dog, people are like, what's wrong with him? What's wrong with him? And that's what I love about these dogs because they're different. And they, I, I, it's literally like a teachable moment every time I go to the dog park and a little kid tries to pet them, pet him and i get to say you know what he was born that way and it's yeah. okay to be a little bit different that's what i have in my dog beautiful deeper <laughs> carolyn how do you feel about there being a caroline on the season is that annoying Can't stand it. i don't like it is yeah. that bad to say i don't like it like that's too close to my name yeah it is i would i, I wouldn't like it. you know i'm i was lucky that I played in a time when I was, you know, there was Boston Rob and then there was um, another, then there was, Rob, there was two Robs on his first season. That's why they had to call him Boston Rob. And then there was a Rob with two B's that had skateboard. And then, and then I came on and then people say like, how many Rob, well, they had Rob every single season on that show, but then they never had another Rob since then. And it would be so annoying. I think if they had like another it. Rob on survivor. And I know that like, and that's why I think a lot of people do try to like do like the whole nickname thing. You never thought about yeah. that. Like to differentiate yourself. You never well, thought, I was like, on a tribe with Boston Rob and then they called me Rob C. Big but Tom I mean, like, called to me, some... called me little Rob. I didn't yeah, like that. Exactly. Like you don't, they shouldn't even cast people like two on one season. They shouldn't. It's too much. Yeah. But I think that's why there are people who try like the Jelinskis or Voce was like, I want to like, you don't, you don't want to be a David. You don't want a common name because you're not going to stand out. It's true. It kind of takes mm -hmm. away like, yeah, not everyone can do that either. But I think like there's only two Robs and there's the Boston and you like who mm -hmm. are the other ones? Yeah, well, thank you know God I mean? they call him Boston Rob. Almost, even when I'm not around, they still call him Boston Rob. It's hard not to like what is like, you know what I'm saying? Mm hmm. But you're you're Rob and that's Boston Rob. There are that's no it. other ones. <laughs> yeah. Um, so tell me about uh, Gabe. What do you think about Gabe? 
<laughs> um, I, like, Do you want to come back to somebody else? No, because I want to be like, I, okay, I think he, Gabe's, he was playing great. He's just not someone that I'm rooting for. And so I have a hard time then talking about Gabe in like a, a uh, you know what I'm saying? Does yeah, that sound, but I, I need to be able to talk about people, even people that I'm not like rooting for. But yes, I just wasn't. Yeah, the, but I, I like, think that's okay. You could not root for Gabe. That what was doing, it about him? Was it that he was overconfident? Overconfident that dance? Like I no, uh uh. And then even just like underestimating Sue. Like Sue is coming back. Yeah. And I do believe that, and I think people are completely underestimating Sue. They are, and it's like you Sue's know what? coming back in this season. Yeah. I think Sue's kind of like. Okay, people, I wasn't sure if you I were think... like making a call about Sue is oh, gonna no. that. Oh no! <laughs> no, like I just think Sue is kind of like you know it's not. Yeah, she's kind of not been in the background at all. But I I, I think that people have kind of looked at her yeah. viewing wise as someone who's just on the outskirts of Gabe. You know. Yeah. Well, but can we talk a little bit about Sue? Because I, I thought coming into this season, okay, here's Sue, and I was like, and you know how it is when the new cast comes out, they say, okay, this is the new this person, this is the new this person, I say, okay, here's Sue, this is the new, this is the next Car Carolyn. Now nobody, there could never be another Carolyn, but I kind you, of felt like, okay, well, this I was is the Sue. I, well, I thought that Sue was like the a a, a Carolyn type that that was going to be was going to be like a big character. But I have to say that Ka that Sue to this point, okay. Well, this was maybe a, a Rob original, but ah, but ah, but ah, Sue has not been like you very much at all. I don't think. No, Rob, are you kidding? I'm not like there's not, I, I, and I don't want to say. I that's what I love about like everyone is unique and everyone is like different mm -hmm. in their own way. And I think like, even when we make assumptions about like people, like that's going to be the next Aussie or that's going to, there is not going to be a next Aussie. There's not. And I'm not like comparing myself to Aussie what about either. Kyle though? Look at he's won four no! challenges. No, no. Even with the, the wins, but you know what I'm saying? So like, I'm like, I just feel like I don't want to see like replic like replications of other people. Mm -mm. I think yeah. Sue is like a different. I'm just surprised you said that. I, yeah. I, I, okay. Well, I, did did I offend you, Carolyn? No, but like, girl, I just I've never heard that. I'm shocked, and I didn't get that from. I think Sue's like sassy, and I love like what she's doing with like the makeup out there like with the mud and like contour well, is stuff. that is she doing m mud as makeup absolutely 100%. okay percent can i confirm that no but i 100 i i can't confirm that i haven't talked to sue but yes, yes. i think sue is doing doing her makeup out there and i love it so anyone that's can you smart. talk that through for me? Because I have heard people say like, okay, well, maybe she's like doing like a facial. Maybe she's like no, using the mud. She's contouring, Rob. Have you ever contoured? No. So she is I don't doing... Even, Carolyn, I don't even know what contouring is. Oh, gosh. Neither did Carson. So like, it's literally like, that's a work of art. So the fact that she's able to do that without a mirror, she's doing it perfectly on her cheekbone. So when the, the lights and the cameras, they hit her face, yes. you are seeing like her cheekbones so defined. You are seeing her lips and her up like right here, the way that the lights and the cameras are hitting her face it is accentuating. Is she all a of game right... changer? Will more people start using the dirt as makeup? Absolutely. I use the charcoal as eye like eyeliner, and I am at there like and oh. um, and uh, eyeshadow to do a smoky eye. So uh, absolutely, like why not? And you get so bored out there sometimes. I don't care. That was you know what fun. I would do. I, had... I would take I would I would take the, the 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 charcoal. I would try to make it look like I had abs. <laughs> I think that uh, nobody's ever tried that before, but wouldn't that be, but, but you know what, it would be bad because then people say, like, Oh, he's a threat. Look at yeah. Rob is like very defined and muscular. We have to get rid of him. Exactly. So I think that so maybe I have to do the opposite of, I would try to like, dr maybe like, uh, make it look like I was like in, in, in bad shape. I don't know how I would do that with the dirt.
<laughs> oh my god it's fun though like you got to do crap like that out there i i think that what isn't talked about enough and maybe i'm just not hearing it but like how much there again it is go 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 yeah but there's so much downtime there is so much time even in the new era yeah, okay, now I sound like a hypocrite because it is go, go, go. And there definitely is like, it's too fast. And at times where you feel like, oh my gosh, give me a down day. But there is a lot of down, like there's downtime where you're just sitting around like, um, there's just time in between, even after the challenge before where it's just like, I can remember my memory is literally sitting in the dirt, looking up at the tree and we're playing I spy. Yeah. That's not fun. And so it's like doing things like, like doing bowling or Q did the hide and seek. Yeah. Those are the things that it's like, it makes it fun out there. And, but sometimes I spy you don't have is energy. not fun. That is horrible. Like, it was awful. Yeah. It's very boring. So it's, it's like, there's those moments where it's, 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 I know we're playing a game. I get it, but you'll go crazy out there. So it's like doing makeup, like having jam jam, do my makeup or seeing Sue, yeah. like take a little bit of time and do her makeup. Like you got to do fun stuff like that out there. It's, it's a lot of boring time too mm -hmm. in between. Carolyn, we saw in the episode this week that there was the rice negotiation and oh. yes, you now you you wanted to sit out for rice, right? I should have like right, like Carson was sick, and then they got the rice for the tribe. I didn't want to, Rob. Oh, you didn't want to of the challenge, and I was like, you know what? I got a tattoo on my armpit specifically for <laughs> you. Got an <laughs> armpit tattoo for this challenge. Yes. Yes, I did, because I had this dream and this goal of doing an endurance type challenge and having my arms up and here it hit me. Here we are. So that's what my driving force was with this challenge. I was like, I can't sit out. I have this armpit tattoo that's going to like keep me. This sounds so crazy, but it's the truth. So I was like, I need to do this challenge because my thought was, is I'm going to look at my armpit and see that I have a smiley face. So I'm going to look at that armpit. I'm going to see the smile and it's going to carry me through the challenge. Okay. It did not. So, all right. So you ended up doing the challenge or you sat out? I did it, and I was the first one out. And then, okay. Jeff, I remember, was like, "You, Carolyn, first one out, didn't even." And I'm like, "So, did, did you get the armpit tat? You had the armpit tattoo. You, oh you didn't God, get it. it. Yes, you got for it this. for Survivor. For Survivor, for an endurance challenge, because I like I thought if." anything i'm gonna do great at an endurance yeah. challenge and i'm gonna have that to carry me through i was out first i should have known better that hey looking at my challenge history i don't think that i should be one even trying to compete so i was not one of the people who sat out i should have been yeah was that a painful to tattoo to get in an armpit no. no no i can i can handle pain and like it, it was it's, it's just more tickly so yeah. that Carolyn, I don't have any tattoos. And I think about getting the, uh, tattoos don't. and don't. Now, at like, I'm not saying now at your age, it's just kind of like. Because my are, skin like, is too flabby now. And no, and, and, and if you haven't can't hold now, the tattoo. If you haven't at this point. No, actually, screw it, Rob. Get a tattoo. Do it. I take that back. And don't think too much about it. I, I think it, I, see, I, I, the, I waited too long. If I would have had like 12 tattoos, I wouldn't think anything of it. But now it's like, it's now it's so precious of like, oh, what's going to be the tattoo? I well, should just it, get a, a smiley face in my armpit. Everybody does that though. That's the problem with a lot of things in life. We overthink things. Yeah. So whether it be a tattoo, like I'm not going to think, yeah, you could say it's on your body the rest of your life. I don't have a tattoo. I re like there's no tattoos I regret. And there's been a few, but I cover it up with something else to yeah. make a new memory. So it, it, don't think too much. What if you already. What's the most painful tattoo to get? My, I got my eyebrows tattooed before okay. I went out on Survivor because I was afraid they'd fall off in the water. And I did it like right before. So I looked just crazy and it looked like Sharpie brows. But my friend does an amazing job, but it hurts like really, really bad. It hurt. That's the only tattoo that I've ever, which it's tattoo, like she tattoos. 
that's the only one that I've ever been like, this hurts all the other ones. Like, and I can handle physical pain. Like I just can. It's like, no, it's like the mental pain, that type of torture. That's bad. I can handle physical, like tattoo me up. But, but to go back to the smiley face that you got cast on survivor and then you went to go to the tattoo yep. parlor and said, I, okay, I, I need to get a uh, yep. smiley face in my armpit. Did the tattoo artist ask you why you were doing that? No, no, it was just like the norm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just what we do is we get tattooed. It wasn't weird. And I think because I have them on so many random parts of like everywhere yeah. that like, you know what I mean? And who are you to question where I'm getting a tattoo? It is a little Not strange, me. But... The, I'm saying it's the artist might have said that because that maybe it's, that's an nope. unusual place to get a smiley face because people are it like, is. oh, ta uh, armpit. That's that's it's unhappy. Weird. It's <laughs> exactly. For some and what's people. been cool is I've had quite a few people send me pictures like after because you could see it on the season like they were yeah. like they did a shot of it and I had quite a few people send me pictures like we've gotten that smiley face tattoo after you. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's cute. It's just little. It's just. Boop. Yeah. So do you feel like that Jeff made a good trade to trade seven shots in the dark for the bag of rice? I just, here's the deal with those shot in the darks. I just think they're worthless. Like get rid of them. And I just, I truly believe that when, mm -hmm. when we were out that did it, did it, did it kind of like stir up the vote sometimes? Yes. Maybe. But they were so like, when you think of like the probability of like, okay. And we know how many times it's worked in the new era. Like we know, yeah. it, you know what I'm saying? It just wasn't like, I feel safe with my shot in the dark. No, it doesn't. It did never had that like effect with me. Nine times out of 10, I didn't know where mine was. Do you know how many times I would wake up and it would be in the sand or other people yeah. would wake up and be like, Hey, I think, I think you lost your shot in the dark. That happened so many times. Well, even people Kyle didn't... was like, I can't believe that you actually went for this. You took my idea. I can't believe it. That was cool. And I, it, as a fan and being out there, I would be like, wow, this made history. And I would feel like this is really cool. But other than that, like, I don't, was it like a great, I, I just can't stand the shot in the darks anyway. And so I like, they're not that valuable. And if you have mm -hmm. to rely on that thing, that's yeah. how I feel. Well, I did you like it when Rachel played the shot in the dark instead of playing her idol? That was smart. Yes. So yes, there's, there's, there's moves like that where it's like, okay, then that makes sense. And that I get that. But other, when it actually comes to like, I just don't feel like they have that much power. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that they're very good at like really making everybody panicky about the vote. And somebody's going to be like, oh, they might play their shot in the dark. Okay. What do we do? We need a backup yes, plan. That. Like, I feel like if anything, it made things uh, more straightforward for everybody. So, yes, and I like what Gabe said, like, that makes sense. It, like, takes away that, like, uh, like now we're not, like, it's more, like, straightforward. This is what it's going to be. But I just, I don't feel like giving those away. Like, I don't, what did you think? Were you like, wow. I was like, I, I was surprised that Jeff went for this um, because I didn't think it was that big of a deal for people. Because I'm like, I don't even know how much longer they could use the shot in the dark. Exactly. So, and, and I, I don't think people actually look at that. Maybe I'm the only one, but on my season, the, those things were falling out of people's pockets yeah. left and right, and nobody seemed to care. Yeah. And so, so it doesn't seem like, especially at this point in the game, like I, no. I, I kind of feel like um, no. or at the, in the pre-merge, it's kind of a bigger oh. deal. Yes, like you see, like with Maddie getting voted out, no one's voting at Tribal Council. That yeah. was like crazy. Well, but Jamie like actually now... hit the shot in the dark. What? Jamie, uh, she was safe. Oh, I can't, oh my God, how do I not remember? I was right? just thinking in terms, yes, I was just thinking in terms of like, um, just but they didn't vote for her. Vote. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And she did a good job of like saying, hey, I'm playing my shot in the dark and then nobody vote and no, people didn't vote for her. So I, I really feel like that at this point in the game, I feel like the shot in the dark is not very u useful. That's one that I just I really um, oh, it just doesn't need to be there, in my opinion. It's mm -hmm. just no. But it was cool. It made history. It um, I, it, it was cool for Kyle. Like I did. I was like, oh, my gosh, they didn't just him recognizing that. Like, that's fun as a fan. But like. I don't think that the shots, the shot in the darks is that like yeah. powerful. And, and 
Carolyn, if you were out on Survivor 47, who do you feel like that you would be most likely to be working with in this game? Can I ask you who you think first? Who do I think you would be working with? Mm -hmm. Hmm. So I'm trying to think of uh, the players that you worked with in your season. Um, so I I'm going to say, I think that maybe, could it be Teeny be the person that you would be working yeah. with? Teeny, absolutely. I think so. Like, even here's what my season, I think, like, how do, like, I don't know how you connect with people, Rob, but how I connect with people is by sharing and opening up. And that's the thing on Survivor, especially like on my season. And it happened. Like, there was moments with me and Franny um, where we actually like shared with, with one another about like past experiences, whatever. But for the most part, there wasn't a lot of that on my season. Me and Jam Jam did it. Me and Carson did it. But a lot of people, and I, I, I shouldn't have been shocked because it's like we're playing Survivor and not everyone wants to put that out there. But it's like, that's how I connect with people. I can't have, and that's why I struggled even like early merge. I can't go, I'm not like one of those people who can go into a room and be like, so, and make normal conversation with people. I don't know how to do that. I want to immediately talk about your trauma, your pain, your like backstory, what got you here. I want to get like deep. Not everyone wants to do that. So the surf, yeah. there's so many surface level conversations, especially entering the tribe at Merge. Like I am not going to be that person anyone wants to like come to and talk to and be like they'll be like i'm not sharing that with you and for the most part even after a few days people just didn't want to share so if teeny were to open up like teeny did in the confessional then i think that we would be good but i need to feel that and yeah. me and jam day one we were telling each other our life stories because there's certain people like that you just connect with and you feel that with and other than that like I didn't get a lot of that I need that with like someone I can trust and obviously we were like all over the place yeah but well something out. from your season that I actually really related to was that there was a point when the merge started and yeah. you felt like that hey all these people in the merge and it's like this big this big group of people and I don't really fit yeah. in with that and, and that's no. something I, I really do experience of that. I feel like that, uh, like a group of people coming together, I really struggle to fit yes. in with a group. Absolutely. And it's like where, and I truly am, I've said this recently, I am blessed with the ability to not give a shit. I don't care if I, let's say I walk into a room and everyone is, but you can't really do that on Survivor, but let's like i won't i'm not gonna get embarrassed because i'm alone like on tv or i'm not gonna be, get embarrassed because i look like a freak or i burn my shorts and there's a big hole or i have a big poop stain on my ass i don't care. did any of those things happen a few okay <laughs> i burnt my rob don't look at me like okay I'm, 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 I'm gonna avert my gaze you know whatever i'm not normal and i get that and so it's like but i also know that like it's going to be hard for me to go into a group and like say normal things that everyone else is talking about so yeah you hear me like i like sweating and i don't remember it going down like that and i asked franny and matt at the fair i was like were you guys seriously staring at me like that i didn't remember it like that but again what did they say I, She's like, yes, Carolyn, we were literally like, because I was like, did they edit it like that? She's like, no, we were literally like, what the hell? I'm like, mm -hmm. well, that's the story of my life. Like, I'm used, I'm so used to that. Like, I'm not going to fit in everywhere, but that is like, that's okay. And that's what I try to like, even tell the people that I meet with when I do my sessions. It's like that, like for Teeny, everything different about you or all those areas where you feel like you don't fit in, that is the most beautiful. And as you try to like, find that everything different about people is beautiful in my opinion like i love it i don't want to like be with the so i really take pride in like if i'm not fitting in with anyone i'll sit over here alone and i'll talk to my dog or i'll that's okay it is so exhausting rob and you know this 
can, can you imagine going into a group or going into a conversation and feeling like you have to put on a front of like somebody who you really aren't? I don't have the ability to do that. I just can't. And it was no different on Survivor. I can't fake and go out with these people and be like, so Danny, tell me about the cannolis. I don't <laughs> fit in with Danny. And it's the same reason like I struggled on the journey. Like they did, those were people who they didn't want to hear from me. They didn't really respect yeah. me. And it's like, that's okay. Yeah. They're not going to get deep and emotional with me. Come on, read the room. Caroline. Did you feel what? like Rachel this week when Rachel was sitting there with Sam and Kyle and they were really going back and forth about their plans for Gabe. And then, uh, you know, Rachel was like, okay, well, you know, it's, Sam, and not that it didn't seem like that those, uh, you know, Sam and, and, and Kyle were just ignoring Rachel, no. but it was a little bit of like the, the guys talking and Rachel was more sitting back and not, not as much that she was being ignored. Exactly. I don't, I didn't look at it as her being ignored. Like the, it was very clear that I like was, and I think that like speaks to like, even how Rachel presents herself versus how I present myself. Rachel's not like, I'm like the squeaky <laughs> You know, where Rachel is like, how I perceived it more is like Rachel's just kind of sitting back and like being the strategic one, kind of listening, kind of that's how I saw it versus not like mm -hmm. them ig ignoring her or disrespecting her or, or they they still have like valued her opinion. I did not feel that at all for a lot of the game. Not you at said, all. You said that you uh, burnt your shorts when you were on Survivor. We saw and Teeny. so did Teeny. Yeah, Teeny, yes. uh, that the bag went on fire uh, for for Teeny. Uh, that how, what, what do you do? That's symbolism, and I was like, that is your that's your new start. I agreed. I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, what do you do? That's the thing. So many people too, like freak out. I had so many people saying like, you burn your shorts, you. And I'm like, whatever, let it happen. There's worse things that could happen. I have. Were a you drying them? How did you burn the shorts? I was drying them and it, they, everyone told me you're going to burn them. They're too close to the fire. And I'm like, if they, if they burn, they burned and they burned and yeah. they were fine. It's like everyone else around me was stressing out about my hole in my shorts. They probably looked for cool. Me. I loved it. And I'm like, it's fine. Same with her bag. It's functional. Yeah. She, like there's nothing wrong with it. So it's like, this is a new start. It, the bag still works. Yeah. Did she lose any clothes, do you think? Or was it just the bag? I think just the bag. But at that point, so many people are gone. Like, mm -hmm. I'm sure they're like, that I don't know. That was scary. Because I would imagine that what happened was that uh, Teeny was like sleeping by the fire. Yeah. Is that is that what happened? And yeah. then like, that's her, her head is on that. That's the thing, like, too, it's like, that's your pillow, that's your blanket, that's your everything, and, like, you're you're literally sleeping in the dirt. Did you sleep in the shelter at when, like, your season, were you sleeping so, in the shelter? Carolyn, so, that we slept in the shelter, but our sh our shelter burnt down, that we had a I not fire. remember, it was too long ago. Yeah, that we had a whole out. fire, that there was one guy, Butch, and he collected, he was like, we need more firewood, we need more firewood. And then he got so much firewood. And then we went to the we went to the reward challenge. And when we came back, not only did the whole shelter burn down, all of our bags were what? in the shelter. How not? Was this on TV? It How was on TV. Yes. That? Yes. And and can I tell you what the, the worst part was that all of our other clothes were, were in there. So then they, I basically the last like eight days of Survivor had just like a tank top and uh, just the shorts I was wearing, and that's Why did it. Why move that? Why didn't people move like the production? production? Oh, that's the, that's a question for you know the survivor, the Amazon production. Um, but that's I think they used, crazy. they used to say then that that like they would be fired if they uh, interfered with what was going on. But yeah, no, it was it was not good, Carolyn, and I, I we were freezing. I can't imagine, like, because you you're freezing at night. That's the thing. You're. That, I light. just basically had like a like a, a little tank top and the shorts I was oh, wearing. Oh, oh. That's, that's it. Hell. That's, that's hell. it. That was the worst. And then it also and then it rained like every night after. It was like the rainy starting starting yep. of the ra rainy season in the Amazon, and it was horrible. The that's worst. The hell of the game. Well, they so talked we about this on the On Fire podcast about uh, what it's like when it rains, and that's really the worst where like i get like uh, you know uh be, you know whatever the survivor version of ptsd is like sometimes yes. it's like 
I'm outside and it's raining. I was like, oh my God. There's no, it, it, that would be horrible. And then you're freezing and you, yeah. no way. And everything's wet and you don't have any clothes. Like that is truly hell. I'm sorry. No, it's like, the worst. Out. It's the the worst thing about Survivor is, uh, you know, if, if it doesn't rain, you know, and I didn't play in the new era, but I, I say all the time that you could do a hundred yeah. days of Survivor if it doesn't rain. If it doesn't rain, the rain is the absolute worst. And we didn't have a ton of it, but it, yes, it, it completely, you're just shivering and you're all wet and everything's wet. You're all bit, it, ew. Yeah. You know, like, mm -mm. and I think that what people don't get, because like on the show, it's like, oh, it's raining at nighttime and it's the next day and everybody's like groggy. It's like, no, these people didn't even go to sleep because they were soaking wet in the rain all night. And there's a hierarchy when it comes to the tarp. And I remember when we came, it was, it really was, it was Lauren, um, all of them, like all of Rock 2 was, they were in the shelter. We they were like sleeping spots. in the dirt, like just, ugh. well, when it came down to the tarp, even, it was like me, Carson and Jam, we were like on the outskirts. I'm like, can I get a little bit? Nope. We were pushed out. We weren't even under the tarp. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, can I just like can somebody just let me in? It's awful. Yeah. I, that's how it was. We were on the outskirts completely, even when it came to like sleeping arrangements. And you can tell where you are in the game, right? By Oh if you... yeah, by where it's true. It's true. The kings are in the in the shelter and all of us freaks. It would be me, Carson Jam. I'm not kidding you. We were literally on the outskirts. Like I'm like, can I get a little bit no. under the tarp? Nope. No. Oh God. Anyway, like I'm, yeah. Now I'm like thinking about it, and I'm like, no, thank you, Carolyn. I would love to hear a little bit about your podcasting experience because you've had some interesting people on your podcast, and I saw, I saw most recently, you talked with Russell Hance on your yep. podcast. Russell is. <sighs> Russell's one of those, and I don't want to say characters. And I've, Russell... I've talked with Russell many times over the years on, on the podcast. And, and, and Russell, that I feel like that there's like, there's like two sides to Russell. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and for me, I was uh, like during my season, he had like started some stuff. And I've heard about like Russell and even like read some of his stuff where I'm like, what is he doing? But he was starting some stuff with me on Twitter during the season. And I'm like, What? What is he doing? Oh, I forgot about that. Yes, you were feuding on Twitter. Yes, which I'm just like, come on, it's Russell. And then, but at the same time, I was like, what is going on in this person's life? And how I looked at it is there's this person just wants to stay relevant and wants attention. He That's likes like, to smoke. It's pretty, it's pretty simple. Like, but at the end of the day, I was like, what is going on in this per? And, and that's where I think a lot of people would be like, who cares? Why are you even digging into it? Let that blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. Well, I was curious. And I'm like, what is going on in this person's life where they are going to like call me these names and like, for what? What are you okay? So um, I talked to him like once or twice since then. And then like everyone else, like I was like, oh my gosh, when we started the podcast, I'm like, oh, he's so controversial. He's so, I'm like, we shouldn't have him on. And then I'm like, you know what? I've talked to him a few times and like I'm yeah. seeing a different person than the person online. And so I really wanted to just dive into that. Like, who are you as a person? Because we know who you are on Twitter and we know who you are on TV. But is that really who you are? And he was so vulnerable and so open and like, am I excusing his past behavior? I don't know. I've done a lot of terrible things in my life too. A lot of things that I'm ashamed of and embarrassed of in my past. I mean, it's not anything recent, but mm -hmm. when I was, wasn't, when I wasn't sober. So it's like, okay, I'll give him a chance. I'll talk to him. And it's like, he gets deep. He gets real. He opened up and yes, he is 100% this like Twitter villain and this villain on TV. And I believe that he just never knew how to shut it off. And with, and that's like for everyone, we all have like the shit that we struggle with and we all, and we, we come off in certain ways to mask that or to, he's very sensitive. Mm -hmm. I, I, I enjoyed having a conversation with him and he was, he was, 
I did. And I liked his perspective because whether you love him or you hate him, just like Richard Hatch, you can't deny the impact they've had on the game and how they've shaped it. Well, certainly. And that really uh, is a great uh, tie back to Gabe, who said, I want to keep the spirit of Russell Hance alive in the game. And it, and it really is uh, k kind of a shame in that uh, Russell is somebody who Survivor uh, really, you know, uh, you know, celebrated for uh, quite some time that uh, really that when you look back at that era in which he played, yeah. uh, I, you know, I've called Russell survivor Viagra and oh, he is. that he came along at a time yep. when survivor was not so much longing for characters. They had just come off of a season where they had Tyson and, and coach and JT and Steven and Taj and, 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 and yep. Gabon had characters, but in terms of the gameplay and what he did in yep. terms of, you know, uh, bringing together the hidden immunity idol as something that could be used as a weapon, you know, it really was not thought of uh, in that way before Russell. And the fact that he could go and just go out and create paranoia by looking for it. And then also what Gabe, I think, tried to bring back of like he had his people and he was yes, going to stay Lord. loyal to his yes. people and really yep. create panic around, well, they're not moving, so we better, we got to do something and they might play the idol and what are we going to do? And it did really create a lot of chaos and interesting gameplay. And, and he really brought that to the show and they got addicted to Russell and really that he plays in, in survivor 19 and survivor 20. And then they, they take a season off from, they bring him back in survivor 22. Yeah. Um, and, and then it's not even Russell himself, but then they bring back, uh, his, they bring his, his nephew into the show. Uh, and, and maybe that, maybe that that's not a decision that should have been made because his nephew is, is a, a very young guy at the time that they bring him. Yes. And then they bring him back again after he's been through the, you know, the ringer of like playing, um, and maybe also Russell's a little too hard on his nephew. And then the family, uh, like is like, Oh, you screwed up. Uh, and then he comes back and is uh, not in the right headspace to play exactly. the second time. And then also, would they you bring... blame him, Rob? I, I have he... so much empathy for Brandon because you know what? And and here's the the problem. I think he was too. 18, right, when he played. He, I, I thought he was 19 or 20, but here's yeah. the deal: he got so much hate from his like the family. What was the that family was hard dad? on him at the time. Oh my gosh, who comes out there and is like, what are you doing? And then mm -hmm. Russell coming at him at the reunion. So it's yeah. like, but here's the problem is like Russell feeling like he has to play this character. And then Brandon then coming back and feeling like he had to play this character. And it all just explodes. And I truly believe that Russell has not really known how to turn it off since yeah. leaving. And then his brother plays on Big Brother and then gets evicted from Big Brother because and, and then I think that's that CBS is a little bit like, all right, yeah, that, you know, too much. We did we did too much with the Hanses. Let's go away from it. But, but isn't and that what I, they wanted at that time? Like he was in no offense, like even rewatching, like he has like the dumb girls alliance. And yeah, mm -hmm. that's kind of but at that time, you know it. You were on the Amazon with the freaking peanut butter shit it's like that's what was at around like even back then with like people in their bikinis and they're mm -hmm. getting naked on that was that time mm -hmm. so with russell and his dumb girls alliance that's yeah. what was going on at the time so why is he like some like bad person for half that i don't know he did i think it's all the stuff like he did outside of yes yeah, so no and, it was it, it's not for anything that russell does on the show but i think that because he ends up and then i think then he's like uh you know like uh on on social media and you know t you know uh saying crazy stuff on social media at you know because i think that th that the show says like there's the clip of jeff where he's like i think you know, I think Russell's a bad guy and we don't want him to play again. But I think that Russell probably would have played again on a Game Changers or, um, you know. Um, but I told him. That's what I told him, except for his, I go, you need to just shut up outside of this and you don't know how to turn it on. And mm -hmm. we're living in 2024, like, but he did say, like, he looks at Twitter, TikTok, all of it as TV. 
He doesn't yeah. look at it as any different. And I'm like, you can't do that. You can't because it's offensive. So I think that he would have been so much more successful in like future things are like, I'm like, why aren't you on the traders? Like you, like, do you know what I mean? Or house of house villains. Of villains. Or other... yeah, house of like, villains needs Russell. Like, you know what I'm saying? And so I said, you're not, you, you're not getting called because, or unless he is, I don't know. But you know what? It's like because you're so offensive online, turn like t turn that down yeah. about twenty notches. He just goes one one step too far. Exactly, but he's but a I good that, person underneath. And and I think that maybe that that ability to go one step too far is what made him into the great television character uh, exactly. that he was for the show. Yeah. If he didn't, if he didn't have that gear, would he have had all of the greatness that he had? at that time um but you know i i think that the the thing about russell and i hope i'm not getting myself in trouble with russell talking about this no, russell but i think this. that where russell was was best was when there was an editor giving you yeah. a version of russell and yeah. then with social yeah. media when russell was yeah. his own editor that was where there were problems like with, with the guardrail was off on social media exactly because i he was like are we gonna go live i'm like are you crazy i will never go live with you, russell. <laughs> like, no way but yeah maybe an part, edited like, russell was always the best version of russell yes but that's a person like again we want it yeah. and i think that we live in this society too where it's like people get written off and then it becomes like the trendy cool thing to like write those people off and it's just like you know what I'm saying? Like we all have we should give and people, it mean... uh, uh, you know, a chance for redemption. And Russell yes. once went to Redemption Island. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. I just like, I really like people who, I don't know. We all have difference of opinions and he clearly is somebody who has like struggled and I don't care. I've got so many people who do yeah. who would message me and they're like, don't you give him a chance and don't you. And he's, he's just lying to you and he's okay. So what if he is, yeah. then I'll get burned. I don't know, but I, I like to give people a chance. Yeah. Carolyn, I feel like, tell me if I'm off base with this. You're kind of like your shorts and people are like, Carolyn, <laughs> those shorts are getting a little too close to the fire. Like, no, I, I like uh, that. That's fine with me. If it gets a Let little burned, if it gets a little burned, who cares? So what? I'm exactly. gonna get a. I'm gonna get a little close to the fire. Let me. Let me. Yeah, let in me. Every let me. They're my shorts. Let me get. Let me. Let me get them a little close to the fire. Who cares if they get a little bit? It'll be fine. I I'll be fine. I can handle. And that's the thing. I'm like, I can handle myself. But also I do, I feel like I have this ability too to just when I talk to people, like for them to open up and share. So it's it, like, I've enjoyed my conversations with, with Russell and there's just so much more to him as a person yeah. than all of the bullshit. But I feel like people like Russell feel like they have to go into rooms or go into conversations and be this person. And you don't. I'm like, Russell, I like talking to you. Yeah. When you aren't being this freaking freak of a character <laughs> you don't need to be but yeah. that's what happens in real life too and teeny talks about this in the episode where i feel like i have to be this way or be this way we get put like, in a box yes fight it mm -hmm. for anyone listening fight it because it is so exhausting feeling like you have to be anything can you imagine going into one room going and i'm like a chameleon Oh my God, it's too exhausting. So it's like, be okay being alone sometimes. Be okay just staying in with your dog. Like that is, it's way less stressful than like going, or if you do go out places, like I am, when even for the watch parties and stuff that Carson and I would go to, we would be like eating macaroni at the bar with our juice boxes. You know, we don't need to be a part of like, what is that like the cool thing to do? No, we'll be eating our kids meal. It's just, if now, you don't now, Is that in, a metaphor, Carolyn, or, or literally you, that that's, you like eat pasta and, and a juice box? No, that happened. That happened. And I prefer like to just like, I don't need to be in with everyone, mm -hmm. you know? And it's yeah. okay. It's way more stressful when you put yourself in these environments and then 
huh, everybody? No, like sometimes I don't fit in. A lot of the times I don't fit in. And yeah. I, that's okay. That's okay. How was talking with Richard Hatch? He's so smart that like, but he's the, he's the definition of what you just said about like players who can like separate it. Mm -hmm. And uh, like, he he's like a Genevieve. It. He's a Genevieve, but Genevieve, I'm sorry, has emotions a little bit. I see. Yeah. No, you Richard, think? Richard very much. And I, and I spent uh, a fair amount of time with Richard when we were on the All-Stars. And then we were out of the game at Ponderosa. What did you think of him? Have you talked to him? When's the last time you've talked to him? I haven't. I have not t spoken to him recently. He's like, again, he's one he's of those a, I people. think he is a incredibly interesting person. And I think he has he very interesting things to say about uh, many, many different subjects. Thank you. He does. And I like, I can't really keep up. There's, he's so, mm -hmm. I, I, he'll text me things and I'm like, honestly, you need to put this into a phone call because I don't even know what you just said. He's really smart and he's deep and he's a thinker. Um, and he, he does do well at these games. He, I mean, he didn't do so well in house of villains, but like, come on, that mm -hmm. show was crazy, but he's he, again, another person who like changed this game. And it's like, I just feel like, so I will say that I think that Richard is a, is a very smart guy. Um, and I think that he's a very interesting guy. I, I don't think that he has a lot of empathy. Oh, none, none. He doesn't get and it. And I think like, that that not. makes him not such a great play i think he's a, he was an innovative player but i think he yeah. is uh, as russell might say a flawed player because i think you have to have empathy to be good at survivor and to be great at survivor. you have to in the way he talks i was like oh my gosh but he recognizes it but he was saying like even on house of villains this is where you went wrong and this is and it's like and even and russell, he can't even fake having empathy nope and that's where like this isn't Football, this isn't like you have to at least like you have to. This is emotional, whether you want to like accept it or not. Like you have to build bonds. You have to. He none. He is just like, nope. Poop. And I, yeah, he's a different level. But again, so he's got to adapt a little more. And that's what he said with his House of Villains. He's like, I like it's a whole different ball game now. And I did not adapt to the situation. I didn't know. Like I did not mm -hmm. realize like this is. Who else have you interviewed this season? Um, Sandra. So who was it? So it was Reed Kelly, Sandra. Now, Reed, uh, I'm watching. How was Reed? Because I, I, we're watching Survivor San Juan del Sur. It's been 10 years since Survivor San Juan del Sur. And so as... Are uh, you watching it? Yeah, we're watching it week by week because it's been 10 years anniversary. Oh, I can't. Here's the deal with Reed, too, is one of those people who's so talented and so great at everything. Mm -hmm. But that speech... I'm sorry that I go, did you plan that? And yes, he did. I think he was like writing and journaling yeah, and stuff yeah, makes before. Sense. Yeah. That was I, that like, Oh my gosh, I would never be able to even talk like that, but it was so beautifully written. And so, uh, Oh my gosh, I love rewatching it. Cause it just shows his personality, but he's great. He's a great friend of mine. And I just really respect him and he's just does really well with like, he's so talented with yeah. every, he's one of those people who just is great at everything. And what I love about Sandra is, and you know, this Sandra is the most realist person around where she just draw like nothing. I could ask her the day before, will you do the podcast? Sure. What time you need me? I just really like her. She helped me so much before traders. She was like my, like just a great person to rely on, to call. And she was just so helpful, but she gives a shit. She yeah. cares. And she's so real. I love Sandra. I would like, I don't That's know. That's her superpower. She, like, she, it is, but she's so real about it where there's certain people where it's like, I don't know if I'd click with you. Like Sandra, don't give a shit. She every, she'll click with everyone. I would love I, I didn't realize she was so amazing. Like, cause she was someone I would have been scared to like reach out to. It's true. And then the traders happened and that's when I was like, hi, she is so amazing. I can't say enough good stuff about her, but she's just so real and so natural and just so, okay. I gotta, oh, I can see why she would do well out there. She just says it and she makes you comfortable. I really like her. Mm -hmm. Sandra, do you ever How have her on here? Uh, uh, many times. 
When's the last time? I just feel like she's so. Yeah, uh, we talked to her after the traders. So after the traders, yeah. Yeah. She's just she's amazing. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just saw her at UNC a couple of weeks ago. Oh, yeah. And she's at all of this stuff. But even the way she's able to do it, kind of like how you, you're very like, and you get people like you're able to stay on track. And like, that's where I struggle with the podcast is like me oh, and Richard's the same way where we went. All of a sudden it was dark out. We were talking for hours because Carson's stuff wasn't working. Yeah. And all of a sudden it's like hours later. And I'm like, oh, crap. And I can't, I'm going on tangents and Richard's going on tangents. That's where you're good at, like, do, 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 let's move. Like, you're a good, that's a good podcaster. That's where I struggle. I'll just go on into oblivion. Yeah, but you know what? I think that you are a good tandem of, you know, like, <laughs> I, I, this is what I say about podcasts. And uh, that a, a, a great podcast, and I'll say this um, this way, needs one organized person and one person who's a big personality. That's what a podcast uh, needs to be. And Wait, if it's is too... Is this, li is this oh, live right now? No. Oh, I like saw the live up there. I got distracted. No, we're like, recording. Oh, sorry, Rob. Okay, You're good. My... Okay. Yeah. Yes, and I agree with you. Is and that it, what like... If you have two people, there there needs to be a polarity there of that. If you have two organized people, but neither of them are personalities, then that's not going to work. And if you have two personalities, it might be fun for a little bit, but it's not going to get anywhere. No, you're right. You're right. It's still, it's, it's, and that's where I feel like Carson like keeps me on track, but I've been, honestly, I've been on him recently about he's not smiling enough. I felt like, but I get that. Like I told Don't him he needs to smile it. more. Don't make him fake I, it. I told him, like, start smiling or you're out. You'll replace him. Yes. You'll vote out your your number one ally. That's very new era, Carolyn. I have to if he's not going to smile. And don't you know how this is? Remember when I even told you, Rob, I was like, you were losing. Like, you weren't smiling for a while, which I understand because, like, these are long. But then I started to see that glimmer in your eye again. In, in this I podcast, to... I wasn't smiling? Yeah, I feel like I told you no, that I, at the end of yes, you were you lost like you were you were you were exhausted, which I don't blame you. You were doing twelve hour long podcasts. Yeah, That's yeah. a mistake. No oh, this not today, to not today. You're talking in the past that I wasn't always past, smiling. Yeah, you but your glimmer came back. The sparkle yeah. came back after there was like a few. Maybe it was during season forty three, and that could have just been because it was season forty three. I don't know. Maybe, but it. It was your like glimmer was it, but it came back during 44. Yeah. I'm serious. You know what? I, I feel like that the start of the new era for me, I, I think was rough. Uh, I think that the show yes. came back. There was a lot of stuff that people were like, I don't even know what this is. There was a lot of serious stuff. The show was very serious and I like to have fun. I think survivor is both things. I think survivor, the best survivor it's there's serious and there's game and, and there, and, and, but it's also fun. And yes, you know, we're ha there's funny moments and, and and funny characters, and that's the peak survivor to me. But I think that the start of the new era was very serious, uh, and it, and the gameplay was very, very jam packed, and the fans were also like, "This is yes! too much. This is too much." And so, you what know, are you supposed to talk about then? Be right, like, oh. right, and a lot of times that I don't know if Survivor sees it that way. I'm kind of like the customer service department of Survivor, you know? I'm out yes. here and, you know, yes. if they if they send out a, a product that's defective, you know, they can't get a hold of, you know, uh, the people that made it. They're calling customer service. And I'm like, hey, hello, cus Survivor, customer service, how can I help you? It's like, yeah, yes. you know what? That uh, I really didn't like, they took all the votes away. It's like, oh, okay, let me see. Is there anything that we could do about that? Uh, do you, don't you feel like they li like, cause I know you like, can't say all this, but like, you, you are very like, hello, people listen to you. Do you feel like they like, who listens to me or even like CBS survivor? Like you have, like, I don't know. I think that the they, there's like a, they listen to a, a lot of things. I, I, but I don't have like a direct like line Not to production of like, Hey, change this. I don't like, um, I'm sure that there's like, they get 
feedback. And I really do think that in the last couple of seasons that You're I think presence, that, though, with the fans, that can't be ignored, Rob. Well, I think that what, what I do is a lot of ways I give a voice to a lot of the fans yes. to be able yes. to, you know, share some of their ideas or even their frustrations. And I think that that's a helpful part of this community that ends up happening. But I do think that they the they found a good balance in the last couple of years. I think from where we started in the new era. I agree, though. It's like I don't think like it, it was too serious, and it's like at the end of the day, like yes, this is this is a game. And it should be fun. Like we. Yeah, I think your season be. started to be like the the beginning of that that curve. You know, like, what else, what are we doing? I know this is a game for a million dollars, and I know, but, like, it, 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 it should be. Well, I guess that's what 50 is all about is fun. So, you know, we'll joy. see. Jo or joy. Yeah. So we'll see, which okay. I do like a little bit of not joy, though, too. But, you know, we'll. Yeah. You know, with Almond Joy, they say sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. <laughs> exactly. That's why no they one make mounds them. also, yeah, which is also coconut. Which can well, be found nobody, very much on Survivor. Nobody eats either one. Heck no. Don't you tell me that's your favorite candy bar or something it, it or I will big, judge you. Uh, yeah, I'm a bit, it's a big favorite at my house, the Almond Joy. No, it's not. Yeah. And yeah, Carolyn, can I tell you, my son, when he was little, that I would we would get them. And I would say like, oh, Almond Joy. Uh, and then my son, he was very little. That he reached into the candy uh, bowl and took out uh, the other candy, like uh, like oh, I'm enjoy this Snickers. Uh, I'm enjoy this. I'm shocked. He thought he, but he thought he, right that now? I'm saying I'll enjoy. No. Oh, so he thought you were saying something else. Yes, yes. So you don't actually like almond. I do, I do. I, I what's not a, it's coconut, almond, chocolate. No one. If you asked a hundred people. What's your favorite candy bar? It's not my favorite. My favorite. It's not my favorite, but I do. Uh, but I think like it's a it. nice. I like it. I'm judging you. Same with people who That's like okay. Milky Ways. Like no, I don't even or... compare a Milky Way or a Three Musketeers to Almond Joy. Oh, but they're all. Did you bad, like the so... coconut when you were on Survivor? No, I mean I ate oh. it because I had to, but like no, that wasn't. So like, I like yeah, coconut. I would... Coconut's okay, but again, like I'm not gonna. What eat about kiwi? Eight. You like kiwi? Oh, yeah, I love kiwi, but I wouldn't eat like that. Pineapple? Be, like, yeah, I love all that. Okay. I'm just saying like that wouldn't be like almond. Ugh, I wouldn't pick it out. <laughs> all right, Carolyn, what else is going on for you? Are you still cameoing? Yeah, I had to take, well, there was like two days that I had to not be on, like take, not take a break, but like just turn it off for two days. Yeah. And the, what they're doing right now. So now I'm like, there, have you heard about this? So what? I was posting all the time. Yeah. I'm like, I want to, I want to be Boston Rob. I'm yes. never going to be Boston Rob. And I've kind of accepted That's that. That's how I feel. Like, you, no, you were not. But they did this like the, two months ago or three months ago, you know, three months ago, they had this ranking system. I was yes. always number two or three, two or three. I gave up trying to beat Boston Rob. Well, then I turned my account off or, or I had to take a break for two days. Now I'm like number 10 or something. And I'm not going to lie. It was getting to my like, I was like, oh my gosh, like, how am I going to? Yeah. But you know what, Rob? It's like, it's okay. It's I don't need to like, I, I'm not going to be Boston Rob and that's Okay. I'll work my way back. We all have to come to terms with this, Carolyn. I don't want to though, but I, yeah. was, I don't. So I don't are these like... the charts? Because I talked to, I talked to Q on the podcast yep. the other day and he said he turned his off for a little bit. Yeah, I did turn for his two back days on. and now I'm number, and now I'm not, this was like a week ago. Wow. I just had it off for two days, like where it wasn't doing requests. Boy, some people make like, it a lot of cameos. I, I I like I love it. I spent so I we we did got our like year review thing recently. Yeah. I have spent over sixty six hours filming wow. cameos this year. So like I I love them. I go really deep. I go really personal. I love sharing. I go longer than a few minutes, and I love sh like I I truly enjoy doing cameos. Yeah. I love it. Boy, it's fun. See, I thought I was maybe I was charging too much money. I'm looking at everybody else. Maybe I'm not charging enough. Maybe people are like oh, it's not worth it. 
Well, I do sales too once in a while mm. where I'll do That's like it. You got to mark it up and then have a sale. But also it's like, I, I kind of just have kept it at this. Like when I couldn't keep up with them, I was way higher or like, you know what I mean? But like, I consistently get them. I enjoy yeah. doing them. I love Cameo. I gotta look, maybe I'm shadow banned on Cameo. I don't even, I'm not even on the charts. You got to Rob, you got like, but you're so busy with others. Like, I don't, girl. but, but like, I can't, some of these people are getting more cameos than me. Brad, yeah. Brad is getting more cameos than me. Well, what's crazy is we were always told, or I don't want to like bring attention, but like we were always yeah. told like you can't do them till after the season. And now like, yeah, all, no, all, no, which, yeah I don't think they care anymore. They don't that. care anymore, which is people, great. Like last season, people were just like in the middle of the season. Yes, because Q, I was like, oh my yeah. gosh, how were you able to do that? But You know what, it's like, it's sometimes, and, and um, you know, being around the block for a little bit, and maybe this isn't, uh, oh, maybe the view top survivors, okay. I, I don't think I was looking at the top rankings. But anyway, that you know, sometimes they care about things a lot, and then they sort of stop caring so much, and then somebody, like, uh, gets in a lot of trouble, and then they start caring about things a lot again. Boston Rob's always number one, though. Yeah. Okay. And so I'm just saying, I post. That's what a they lot tell me. Them, yeah. I post a ton of like Boston Rob's just one of those people that will always just be in everyone's face. It's true. But I post a lot about them and I share mine a lot and I, I enjoy doing them. And I think that shows. Yeah. So book okay. me on Cameo. I love doing pep talks, birthdays, wow. uh, anything. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking at how far I am down the list. Now I'm getting competitive. <laughs> Maybe is my ah, is my cameo turned this. off? What is what? How is no, this no, possible? No, Rob, don't I'm not in the top fifty three. Rob, don't. Okay, what am I right now? You're ten. Yeah, that's I'm usually I'm usually two or three. So do you think that wasn't messing with my self esteem mm -hmm. a little bit? Yeah, but I mean, like You're people that like you. people that like quit the show are like doing better than me on cameo. Like. Oh. What are you? Are you even the, in like Aust the like uh, all the Australian Survivor people are just like uh, killing me, Rob? Like I mean, what are you, you what, like? I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm too accessible. That's true. Are you doing them for free? Like, are you on I, the list at all? Do you I don't <laughs> think I'm on the list. So you can see the whole list of people. I'm looking at the top fifty-three. I didn't know. View you top Survivor. That. Maybe do I need to opt into being on the list? No. <laughs> this is horrible. <laughs> no, don't. You're Rob. You don't need to worry about it. But like here, like because people were saying that to me, like because I kept posting and I'm like, I'm trying to beat Boston yeah. Rob, and I yeah. couldn't. But whatever. Freaking Joey Amazing is destroying me. I thought he, I thought people weren't even allowed to get cameos from him. Who is that? I don't even know who that is. Joe Anglum. Oh, Joe. Okay, I didn't know who that was. Nope. Yeah. yeah, Bruce is killing me. Oh, trust me, I know how you're feeling right now. <laughs> I and that just again, I can't just always be two or three, but I was feeling really insecure. But now I, I, they must, I must be shadow banned. No, like you two. Here's the deal: put this on your Instagram story. Book a cameo with me, and I guarantee you'll be. I, okay, I'll try list. it. I'll try it. It's true. Yeah, because I, I the, here's what my pitch is going to be. I got it. Christmas is coming. Okay. Unless Q cancels Christmas. Yeah. I got a bu that, that my kids, that do you know what they, 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 in their free time, they just put stuff in the cart on Amazon. And yeah. then my wife is like, well, they've been, they deserve it. Like, no, they don't. They get in trouble every day. <laughs> they should get one thing. My wife is like, it's Christmas. You're such a it's Grinch. Christmas. It's Christmas. Like, like, well, how am I? You you call me a Grinch, and then I get no, and I get no cameos. <laughs> book me, book me today. Yeah, yeah, you'll do great. Just All right, book, put that out there. Well, Carolyn, I, I had so much fun. Thank you. I can't wait. Please to be come back. back. Yeah, like, and good, Rob. I know we don't. Like, I'm not talking about the traders, but it's already released. But mm -hmm. I'm excited to come. Yeah. I get to come back on here. Yes. Okay. The traders, uh, for what is it? First week of January was like January 9th. January is 9th. The is the traders? Ow. Oh, January 9th. Yeah. I'm excited. Aren't you excited? I'm very excited. I'm very excited. You know, I try not to think about it too much because uh, I don't want to, I don't want to get spoiled. I don't want to think about like how it's going to go, but that they've got an incredible lineup. 
And this time around, it's uh, you and Boston Rob and Jeremy and Tony. I mean, this is like a fever dream. Can I ask you a question before yes. we go? I like to ask people this. So answer honestly. Were you yeah. surprised to see my name on the list? Um, I was because yes, uh, thank that, you. That, that they have traditionally gone with people that were not recent players. Yeah. And from Stephanie, from Sandra, from Parvati, from Sari, they had not been dipping into that pool. So yeah. I, I very much was surprised. I asked Richard this too. He said he wasn't surprised. And I, because I was like, I was surprised. I didn't think it was real. And anyone who ever told me like, Carolyn, you'd be great. Like I was watching the show mm -hmm. live with my son. I was loving it. And so like getting that call, I never thought that especially with it being parvati all the old school players you think like i never thought in a million years so yeah i was shocked too mm -hmm. <laughs> all right carolyn so where can people uh, in the meantime carolyn is talking about star 47 with carson where can people listen to you too oh. oh thank you i was supposed to do this good see that's why you're good at this rob and you know how to Gosh, that's what I got to get better at. Okay, so you can find us at Let's Get Tribal Pod, and it's on Spotify, on Apple. It's everywhere that you get your podcasts. Is that what you yes. say, Rob? And on YouTube, yeah. Let's Get Tribal Pod. Okay, and then, check it out. Yeah. And then you can get some Carolyn cameos. Help Carolyn yeah. on the list. Look, if, yes. But if, I mean, if hey, look, help Carolyn Actually, stay in the you. top ten. Book no, you. it's fine. Actually, it's fine. No, people are. I, I, I'm joking about the cameo. People are very generous with Patreon and everything. But I just like a little bit. Like I'd like to be in the top fifty-three. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not here to beg people to buy me cam cameos from me. But it's just Book like a little bit list. of like, oh, I'm like, hey, things are going great. And then I look at cameo, and it's like, oh my god. <laughs> I know it stings a little. I get it. A little bit. They didn't yeah. have to make a chart. I know, and they only did it one month, and so we were grinding like, woo, and now they've been doing it every single month. I'm like, I can't even attempt mm -hmm. to try to beat Boston Rob every month. It's not happening. Yeah, well, I'm not even trying to beat Boston Rob. I am. You know, I'd like to just get in the top 50. You know, top one. I hope I'm in the top 100. They they cut off after 53. <laughs> they don't care about the 100. It's just 50. And if you're not there, you're not. I get yeah. it. Okay. Well, thank you, Rob. All right. I well, Carolyn, um, uh, what about Instagram? Um, Carolyn Rose with the zeros. Yes. All right. Carolyn, thank you so much. Um, Thanks, everybody, so much for listening. Looking forward to seeing your uh, comments. Uh, and please... Be nice. I want Carolyn's dad to be oh. able to share positive comments with her. Oh, but Rob, honestly, like, well, like, come as you are. Come as but you are. That is, but that's correct. Like, yeah, be nice. But like, and if you're not, that's like, I get it. I'm yeah. not for everybody. All right. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>